So far, we've only gone over the pitch grid and the time grid, both of which make up the edit area. We also haven't gone over the transport area or the toolbox area, seen right here. We also haven't gone over the macro tools. I'll do that in a separate video. But for now, let's focus on the transport area. The first thing you're going to recognize are the transport buttons. The record button, the stop button, the play button, and then this button here with a circle in it. Now this button represents the loop or your loop on and off. So if I click it, I'm going to turn it off because it's not highlighted. If I turn it back on by clicking, it turns on and off. As I've shown you before in previous videos, there's always more than one way to do something inside Melodyne. So the same thing goes for the loop. I can turn my loop on and off either in the transport area or I can double click inside the editor. This saves you a lot of time by not needing to go up to the transport area in order to turn your loop on and off. In order to make a new loop, all you have to do is click and drag inside the time grid. Now we have a loop set and we can go up and turn it on and off with our on off button. Now if you want to extend your loop on either side, just grab the ends and pull them to the left or right. This allows you to extend or decrease the loop size. Let's make it a two bar loop. There, our two bar loop is now set. Besides our transport buttons up here in the top left, we also have a BPM area. We have a time signature right next to it, place where we can change time signature, and then a meter bridge. I'm going to extend our loop, and then we're going to listen to the file. Sit down, I'll make a word and keep silent So I can try to draw you cause you're beautiful Don't mind my shades cause girl you shine Now that we've listened to the file that's inside the Melanine editor Did you happen to catch what was going on with the BPM counter? No? Well, it started out at 68 And then we ended up at this 92.54 what Melodyne does to get that time information is that it looks at the transients of the waveform. Let's see what happens if we wanted to change the BPM from 92.5 to a consistent 85 BPM. If I wanted to start playback, I can do it three different ways. I can go up to our transport area and press the play button, or I can press the space bar, or I can double click Sit inside down, the edit window. Make a word and keep silent so I can try to draw you cuz you're beautiful. Don't mind my shades cuz girl you shine. By typing in 85 BPM up in the transport area, I've actually time compressed or expanded the audio from which I had in front of me. This is the only place where it'll do that. If you don't want to time compress or expand the audio, the place you have to go is where this button is with the three little dots on it. Let's click that. Now you see in front of you the define tempo window. Right now it says multiply tempo or define constant tempo. So with define constant tempo, you're actually going to type in the tempo you want. All this is going to do is change how the background is representing the BPMs. It's not going to affect the way the file sounds. We've gone over the BPMs. We've gone over the transport buttons, the record, start, stop, and loop. Underneath all of that is our meter bridge. So I'm going to start playback. Sit down, I'll make a word and keep silent. And you can so see can that you we have a monophonic Don't file here. Shades, if it had two separate shine. sides, it would be a polyphonic file. This is where you turn your metronome on and off. Sit down, I'll make a word and keep silent. So I can try to draw you because you're beautiful. Don't mind my shades because girl, you shine. And we can increase or decrease the volume by clicking and dragging up and down. The last portion of the transport window is the time signature. In order to change the time signature, we can't simply just type in a number. Because if we do, it'll keep going back to 4-4. To change the time signature, double click and then change your values independently from each other. This won't affect the actual audio, but it will affect how you view your grid.